Η συνέντευξη του νομπελίστα Νόμπελ Στίγλιτ, οικονομολόγου, βρέθηκε στην Αθήνα για την αναγόρευσή του ω επίτιμου διδάκτορα του Τμήματο Οικονομικών Επιστημών του ΕΚΠΑ, στη φωτογραφία με τον καθηγητή Ανδρέα Παπανδρέου. Ο Στίγλιτ δεν μασάει τα λόγια του και απαντά χωρί περιστροφέ. Τι θα γίνει στην Ευρώπη αν στην Αμερική βγει ο Τραμπ, τι πρέπει να κάνει η Ένωση με τον Βίκτορ Όρμπαν και πόσο απειλεί τη θέση του δολαρίου και ίσω πιο ενδιαφέρον για μα. Η αποτίμησή του για τα ελληνικά μνημόνια και τη ζημιά που έκαναν και κάνουν στην ελληνική οικονομία και κοινωνία. Δείτε. Most recent polls increase the possibility of a Trump presidency. What would it mean for Europe and the world if he implements the protectionist trade policy he advocates and tariffs become common? I think it will, uh, quite frankly, be a, a disaster. Uh, he's proposed extraordinarily high tariffs against China, uh, which would be uh, inflationary in the United States mm -hmm. and uh, adversely affect particularly those at the bottom and the middle, because China exports, you know, critical, uh, not only critical uh, uh, products, uh, uh, critical minerals, but also uh, the clothes that our uh, ordinary people uh, use, our appliances. Uh, but for Europe and for the world, it would mean a fragmentation, uh, a polarization. Uh, and he's threatened even to impose tariffs on Europe. Uh, and that could lead to a trade war. Uh, he doesn't believe in a rules-based system. He doesn't believe in multilateralism. Uh, and his framework for thinking about the global uh, uh, economy is a zero-sum world in which uh, if any other country does well, it means the U.S. Uh, does worse. Whereas uh, most economists and, and Harris takes a much more positive view of international relations. If other countries do well, uh, we can prosper too. It's not a zero sum world, it's a positive sum world. So the differences couldn't be greater, and uh, the dangers to the global order couldn't be greater. Now, the West is challenged geopolitically in multiple fronts, yet the coordination seems missing. European leaders are meeting on Thursday on Ukraine support and they face a veto from Hungary and cold feet from the USA. Will this rift widen? Well, I, I think uh, it is absolutely essential that uh, Europe uh, stand uh, with Ukraine. Uh, Russia has violated the basic uh, international rule of law by invading its neighbor. Uh, if it succeeds, it will uh, be a moment like uh, 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 the beginning of World War II, uh, where uh, there was uh, uh, a uh, dereliction of responsibility to uh, defend uh, 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 the basic rule of law. A and that would happen again uh, if uh, uh, we were, uh, if Europe doesn't stand uh, with Ukraine. Now, uh, the United States, I think, uh, with Biden, has been strongly in support of Ukraine. And that will continue if Harris gets elected. But unfortunately, if uh, Trump gets elected, uh, he's cozy up to Putin, to other dictators. Uh, he, he likes strongmen. And uh, unfortunately, uh, he would put pressure on Ukraine uh, for a settlement which would be disadvantageous uh, to Ukraine and to global peace going forward. Whether he would be successful in that pressure, I can't say. I, I, I think not, uh, but uh, it would represent a fraying of the solidarity that has been exhibited so far. 
And the, with respect to Hungary, I, I feel very strongly that uh, Hungary should be expelled from the EU. Uh, it has violated the basic principles of democracy, which are foundational uh, to EU. It has violated basic uh, rights, uh, freedom of press, uh, and uh, I have been disappointed uh, with the EU's refusal to stand up uh, against this uh, violation of the basic uh, rule of law within Europe. Now, what is your outlook on Europe? Mario Draghi set out a master plan recently for a more competitive European economy, yet big players disagree and the rest are deflecting the difficult decisions. Do you think that the EU is approaching the limit of its operational capacity? Uh, I think the EU demonstrated its ability to work together uh, both in the beginning of the response to Ukraine and in response to the pandemic. Uh, so I think the EU can work together, uh, but to do that, it will have to expel Hungary, uh, and it may have to take stronger actions against other countries that are recalcitrant. Uh, it may have to decide to go uh, in what has been called, uh, uh, you might call it a two-track, two-speed uh, EU, with some countries working together with uh, greater solidarity, greater closeness, uh, greater uh, degree of integration, and other countries being uh, uh, more on the fringe. Um, there are some countries in, in the EU I know who, who think it should be just uh, a little more than a, a, a trade agreement. Uh, I think most of EU recognizes that the strength of EU would be enhanced if they work together in a whole variety of areas, uh, including industrial policies, response to climate change, and uh, uh, European defense. So uh, I hope that either all of EU can work together, uh, uh, and if that proves impossible, that a significant core of the EU forms a, you might call it a fast track mm -hmm. of those uh, uh, committed to further integration and strengthening European, Europe. Let me make it very clear, uh, the EU has been the bastion of democracy and human rights. Um, those basic uh, standards are at risk in the United States, and uh, the, the, it's, that makes it all the more important that EU stand up and fight for democracy and human rights. Going to the global picture, the big picture, the anti-West axis is getting more organized, also on the monetary level. Bypassing the dollar is getting more common. How do you see this trend playing out? Well, I think the use of the dollar is not as important as some people uh, uh, think. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's given us a weapon uh, in the war of Ukraine by, uh, and in some other cases. But it's a weapon that uh, is of limited effectiveness in the medium term because other countries find ways of trading uh, in other currencies. So, uh, 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 unfortunately, it's, it has proven uh, the, its limitations. Um, I, I hope that we can restore American leadership uh, going forward, but it'll be a different uh, world, let me make that clear. Uh, it will be a world uh, where the magnitude of American hegemony uh, will be more limited, mm -hmm. and it will be a world in which Europe and America and other countries committed to democracy work side by side without uh, the kind of domination uh, by one country that has too often characterized the past. Now, 
it's been a while since your last visit to Greece. I would like to ask about your impression. And I'm asking uh, for your impression as an economist, but also as a guest. <laughs> well, as a visitor, uh, the sun is just as nice as it always was. Uh, global warming has made things a little warmer, so visiting in October uh, is uh, even nicer because I can swim in the water. Uh, but I have to say that uh, global warming has made Greece uh, almost too hot uh, in the summer months. Uh, so what is going on with climate change uh, is affecting Greece and every other country uh, in the world. Um, it remains uh, a disappointment uh, that uh, the pace of the kind of structural change that Greece needs and that was the hope of what would emerge after the Euro crisis has not occurred. And I think that's a fundamental flaw of the uh, troika, troika and the agreement that was made in 2015. It was basically uh, the, the uh, austerity that was imposed, the kind of uh, structural adjustment that was uh, uh, imposed on Greece was not a kind of policy that would uh, lead to the revival and restructuring of a strong Greece. Rather, uh, it has led to uh, the country very, very slowly recovering where it was, with those in the bottom and the middle still not recovering, and with uh, many of the assets of Greek Greece being owned by foreigners and by the oligarchs, by a few people uh, at the top, and uh, inhibiting rather than enhancing uh, the structural transformation that Greece so badly needs. I was going to wrap the interview here, but now I'm compelled to ask the, the question, what is the right course of action to remedy those problems, those imbalances further? Well, I, I, I think that uh, one needs to do a reassessment of what has happened and realize uh, this failure, uh, that if more of the assets of Greece are owned by foreigners or by the rich or the, by hedge funds, uh, it's not good, good for the Greek people. If the economy becomes more dependent on uh, uh, tourism, and is less diversified, uh, that is not good for Greece. So one needs a, a clear, uh, I think, uh, an objective assessment of what really has happened to Greece over since the Euro crisis. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the basis of that, and with the realization that a 21st century economy has to be a knowledge economy, has to be based on uh, strong education, a good health care sector, uh, um, an important uh, uh, role for the innovation economy, uh, all these things that mark a successful 21st century economy, strengthening the education sector, these were devastated by the Troika. Uh, and these have to be restored if Greece is to have the kind of prosperity that it deserves. So uh, one has to be begin with an assessment of the devastation that was wrought by the Troika in the aftermath of the Euro crisis, and a clear vision of what a 21st century economy looks like, and the comparative advantages that Greece has, not only in tourism, but in other areas, um, such as climate change. Uh, and uh, how we'll be affected by climate change. And that should set the direction of uh, the re Greek economy going forward. And that's the current effort and the future aspirations. Mr. Stiglitz, thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you.
Οι αγορές πηγαίνουν καλά σήμερα. Θετικά πρόσημα και στις Ηνωμένες Πολιτείες και στα ευρωπαϊκά χρηματιστήρια όπως τα δείτε. Τα επηρέασαν η μείωση του ευρωπαϊκού επιτοκίου αναφοράς κατά 1 τέταρτο της μονάδας. Και είναι μαζί μου εδώ στο στούντιο ο υποδιοικητής της Τράπεζας της Ελλάδος, ο κ. Στόδωρος Πελαγίδης. Να μα κάνει ένα σχόλιο για αυτή την ισορροπία. Από τη μία, ανάπτυξη που θέλει χαμηλά επιτόκια. Από την άλλη, τα χαμηλά επιτόκια φουσκώνουν τις τιμέ. Πού βρισκόμαστε σε αυτή την μπαλάντσα, κύριε Πελαγή. Αυτή την δύσκολη ισορροπία προσπαθεί να πετύχει το Διοικητικό Συμβούλιο τη Τράπεζα, τη Ευρωπαϊκή. Είναι, είναι δύσκολο, ε, γιατί επίση έχουμε σήμερα αυτό που λέμε μία ασυμμετρία στην Ευρώπη. Έχουμε χώρε οι οποίε βρίσκονται σε μια στασιμότητα. Mm -hmm ή μια, ακόμα και μια υποχώρηση του προϊόντος, Γερμανία, του ΑΕΠ της Γερμανίας και, Γερμανία, και, και άλλες χώρες όπως η Ισπανία αντιμετωπίζουν, ε, θα έλεγα κανείς, μια κατάσταση πολύ πιο θετική. Δηλαδή έχουν θετικό εισαδοζύγιο στο τροπισμό των αλλαγών, έχουν ανάπτυξη 2,7% και η Πορτογαλία και η Ελλάδα σε κάποιο mm -hmm. βαθμό. Άρα είναι μια συμμετρία αυτό που λέμε διαταραχών της ζήτηση. Και αυτό το συνολικό πακέτο που βλέπουμε θα το χαρακτήριζα σήμερα έναν ήπιο στάσιμο πληθωρισμό, διότι mm -hmm. έχει από τη μια στο σύνολο πολύ χαμηλή ανάπτυξη, πολύ χαμηλή, λίγο πάνω από το μηδέν, και έναν Ευρωπαϊκή πληθωρισμό ο οποίος πέφτει, αποκλιμακώνεται εξαιτίας αυτής της κατάστασης, mm -hmm. αλλά ακόμα όπως τονίζει η πρόεδρος Λαγκάρ, πραγματικά υπάρχουν οι κίνδυνοι, οι κίνδυνοι είναι η πολιτική της Κίνας που είναι επεκτατική, διευκολυντική, μπορεί να επηρεάσει τις τιμές των εμπορευμάτων, όλα αυτά που γίνονται στη Μέση Ανατολή για το πετρέλαιο. Φοβόμαστε το και τον ζήτημα, παμπούλα των δασμών επίση. Το ζήτημα της, των εκλογών στι ΗΠΑ. Ήδη οι δασμοί αναμένεται, αν εκλεγεί ο Ντόναλτ Τραμπ, να πάνε 10, 20, 30%. Λέγονται διάφορα, θα mm -hmm. δούμε. Άρα αυτή είναι κάποια κίνδυνη. Γι' αυτό και είναι επιφυλακτικό το Συμβούλιο για το Δεκέμβριο. Περιμένει να δει, να δει και την ισχύ τη νομισματική πολιτική, πώ μεταδίδεται δηλαδή μέχρι τότε. Ωστόσο η εκτίμηση που έχω είναι ότι θα προχωρήσουμε. Άλλα 0,25, άλλα 0,25 μέχρι να φτάσουμε σε ένα ουδέτερο επιτόκιο, αλλά με τον πληθωρισμό που θα έχει, θα έχει μεσοπροθέσμος βρεθεί γύρω στο 2% και κάτω από αυτό, πράγμα το οποίο δεν είναι, δεν είναι για πάρα πολύ μακριά. Κύριε Πελαγίδη, να σας ευχαριστήσω για αυτό το σύντομο και περιεκτικό σχόλιο. Θα σας αφήσουμε κάπου εδώ με εικόνες από την Σούπερ Πανσέλινο. Οι εικόνες είναι από το Hong Kong. Είναι η μεγαλύτερη Πανσέλινος του χρόνου, φωτίζει τον ουρανό. Ε, θα παραφυλάξετε για την Ανατολή της αύριο και μεθαύριο, θα είναι εντυπωσιακή. Εδώ το Prime τελειώνει για σήμερα. Θα ανανεώσουμε το δικό μας ραντεβού για την προσεχή Δευτέρα μετά τις 8 και 4. Αμέσως τώρα το Δελτίο Ειδήσεων του Earth News στις 9 με την Αντριάννα Παρασκευοπούλου. Και στις 11 μην χάσετε την προβολή του ντοκιμαντέρ που ετοίμασε η Αντριάννα μαζί με τον σκηνοθέτη μας, τον Άλεξ Δημητριάδη, για το ελληνικό αποτύπωμα τους Έλληνες ε, επιστήμονες και εργαζομένου στο ΣΕΡΝ, το διαστημικό κέντρο στη Γενέβη που προσπαθεί να ξεκλειδώσει τα μισ and is less diversified, uh, that is not good for Greece. So one needs a, a clear, uh, I think, uh, an objective assessment of what really has happened to Greece over since the Euro crisis. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the basis of that, and with the realization that a 21st century economy has to be a knowledge economy, has to be based on a uh, strong education, a good health care sector, uh, um, an important uh, uh, role for the innovation economy, uh, all these things that mark a successful 21st century economy, strengthening the education sector, these were devastated by the Troika. Uh, and these have to be restored if Greece is to have the kind of prosperity that it deserves. So uh, one has to be begin with an assessment of the devastation that was wrought by the Troika in the aftermath of the Euro crisis and a clear vision of what a 21st century economy looks like and the comparative advantages that Greece has, not only in tourism, but in other areas, um, such as climate change. Uh, and uh, how we'll be affected by climate change. And that should set the direction of uh, the re Greek economy going forward. And that's the current effort and the future aspirations. Mr. Stiglitz, thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you.